Welcome to Virtual Sunday Worship. It's Sunday the 2nd of August 2020, uh, the 8th Sunday of Trinity. Mike Graham was licensed as our Associate Minister and the Reverend Matt Stone became our Curate in a short virtual service which took place last Tuesday. The video has now been published and is available on YouTube and our Facebook page. Matt will be preaching later in this service and will be trying to get to know you over the coming few weeks. He moved into his new home in Malmesbury this week. He's actually back in London today uh, saying his final farewells, so he won't be in our Zoom coffee. Uh, but we have something arranged for Tuesday evening on Zoom. Uh, details will be sent out later on. As we get back into church, we're going to try and live stream each service that takes place within church alongside these recorded services. This means you have a choice of attending church or watching a service taking place in church or watching these recorded ones. These will continue for the time being. If we can't live stream a service, which is difficult in a couple of the churches, we will record and publish them later. Today, Tony is leading an outdoor service at Dauncey at 11 o'clock. We're going to try and live stream that, but of course if you're watching this live, it's on at the same time. Uh, so you'll have to catch up with that another time. Mike has been giving great thought and consideration to what it would take to hold services of Holy Communion under the current Government and Church of England guidance. And Matt has experienced a service of Communion in his London church. We had a meeting of the Woodbridge Group Council on Wednesday, during which we discussed this. With all the restrictions that we would be operating under, we feel that the reverence of the Act of Communion has been lost, and rather ironically, this precious act of sharing has been made so sterile that we felt it would be a huge disappointment. After much deliberation, and with your personal health being of the highest importance, the representatives of the six churches were unanimous in their opinion that we should not, at this stage, reintroduce Holy Communion to our Sunday services in church. We felt that the Church of England's own guidance was putting the desire to partake in Communion before the health risks associated with doing it. This was not at my direction, I want you to know. <laughs> I'm happy with the outcome. I was surprised at the way the discussion went, but I'm happy with that decision. Even the most ardent advocates for communion services were persuaded through the discussion that the time is not right yet. We will continue to include communion in our online services monthly and the group council will monitor the situation as the national alert levels change and as the government and Church of England advice evolves. Finally, it was announced on Friday that the wearing of face coverings will become compulsory in church from next weekend. We await details on this, but it's quite clear. You will need to wear a mask or other face covering when attending church from next Sunday. Now, let's turn to worship God, who is supreme over all, who hears all our worries, and who is our hope. As we sing our first hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Restored, forgiven Who like me 
has us, rescues us from all our foes. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, widely as His mercy flows. Angels help us to adore. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Father, in your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer of absolution. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for this week. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair. That we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, I'm sure that you've heard by now that I am about to take a sabbatical, or in the formal language of the taxman, extended ministerial development lead. This is something we are entitled to do every 10 years, and as this year is the 10th anniversary of my ordination, so it's my turn. Uh, we did briefly consider deferring it, but to be honest, the last few months have been brutal in terms of loading, and I need the rest. It's actually easier to take this now whilst the amount of activity is relatively low rather than next year when we expect to be back to our normal levels of services and when we'll have weddings etc that will have been held over. I'm adding in some holiday time as well and so I'll be unavailable from next Sunday. For the next three and a half months I am temporarily relieved of my parish responsibilities I'm still the incumbent, but I'll be disconnecting from all church-related channels of communication. Mike will be the senior member of clergy while I'm off, so please direct all queries to him or via Maggie in the office. I will be spending the next week arranging an orderly handover of things to various people. And after that, Tash and I will be preparing our camper van Clara for a tour of the English cathedral cities. I'm going to be visiting each Anglican cathedral to find out how they use space, particularly how they use it creatively in worship, and at other times as they engage with the general public and tourists and help them to encounter Christian spirituality through their activities. While I'm doing that, Tash will be enjoying her love of walking and exploring the city and surroundings in each place. We will let you know how you can follow our progress. We'll be doing the tour during September and October and then there'll be a few more weeks of rest before I pop up again at the end of November in time for Advent. Please look after Mike and Matt and be gentle with them. The way we do church, the way we're getting back into our buildings and towards our regular service pattern is still changing at an incredible rate. PCCs have been doing an amazing amount of work. They can still meet 
and the group council will be overseeing and coordinating matters between the churches. Thanks. See you again in November. But before that, let's sing again this worship song, Faithful. service continues with a reading from Isaiah chapter 55 verses 1 to 5. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendour. Good morning. Today's reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Jesus feeds the 5,000. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. 
Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed those who were ill. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he told the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and they were satisfied. The disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello Woodbridge group, my name is Matt and I am your new curate. It's so good to be with you and I'm really excited to be a part of what God is doing in this benefice. I am in London this weekend right now saying goodbye to my old church and it's a strange time to be saying goodbye to them and it's also a strange time to be meeting you as obviously meeting in person is so limited at the moment. I am though really looking forward to getting to know everyone uh, starting on Zoom on Tuesday and I'll be among you in the live action services on upcoming Sundays. Please do pray for me as I settle into my new house in Malmesbury and get used to living outside the city. So to our gospel reading today. We have the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 plus. For me, this is one of the most familiar of Jesus's earthly miracles. I remember as a child at Sunday school thinking, how on earth Jesus managed to do it? What did it mean and what did it look like? Did the loaves and fish multiply as Jesus blessed them? Perhaps unfair, and difficult questions for the Sunday school teachers, but my brain wanted more detail at the time. This is a story about a miracle for sure. Jesus feeds well over 5,000 people. If we include the women and children, which we most certainly do, and Jesus feeds them all with the provisions for a small family picnic. They have followed him. And in following Jesus, they find themselves in a deserted place. They have come here, they have come here to nowhere because they want to be near the one that heals. They want to be near the one that changes lives. They are in the wilderness to be close to Jesus, but they have no food and nowhere to get supplies. They are there ready and hungry for Jesus. And the disciples have done their head count, they have done their risk assessments, and they think that it's all a bit too much. They want to send them all away, but Jesus won't. They need not go anywhere, says Jesus. Jesus feeds them because he has compassion on them. He feeds them because he loves them. He has already cured their sick, but he knows they need more. He is not only the man of miracles, there is a deeper connection that Jesus is interested in. They need to eat. They need sustenance. They need more of him. He will not let them leave empty. He will not let them leave hungry. Out in the wilderness, they are invited to a feast. He feeds them because they are hungry. 
and all ate and were filled. All ate and were satisfied. Physically, yes, there was miraculously food enough to go round and plenty to spare, but they are fed spiritually also. He feeds them because they are hungry and without food, we are in trouble. And what is true of our physical life is also true of our spiritual life. We need to be nourished physically and spiritually. We need nourishment for the heart. Jesus feeds them. He breaks the bread and blesses it, just as he will be broken himself for us. He will become the bread. But what does this mean to be spiritually nourished or fed? With churches being closed for such a long time, perhaps we have all had the chance to reflect on this. Perhaps we have felt that something has been missing. A part of our diet has been absent. There is an even greater miracle in that Jesus continues to feed his church with his body and his blood, giving us life. Jesus bids us to sit and eat. We might experience this most fully through the sharing of communion. Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. In this holy act we are renewed by his spirit, inspired in his love and united in the body of Christ our Lord. And we are longing for the time when we can celebrate the Eucharist again fully. But still, in the rhythm of our lives, Jesus invites us to feast on him, on his promises, on his acceptance and his love for us. If we but take a step forward, he invites us in. And I encourage you to seek out these intimate moments with Christ. Maybe that means sitting under a tree to think and pray, taking a walk or spending time in scripture. In these encounters, perhaps we can hear the voice of Christ. In these encounters, perhaps we can hear the voice of Christ inviting us to get involved. They need not go anywhere, Jesus said to, dis to the disciples. You give them something to eat. Jesus has compassion on the crowd and his desire to feed them comes solely from his love of them. There is no demonstration of temporal power or display of influence. There is no manipulation in this feeding of the 5,000. You give them something to eat. He says to his disciples, you give them something to eat. So in this story, the disciples are invited, we are invited to learn how to feed the hungry in a manner that the charity does not become a way to gain power over those who are fed. We are invited to learn how to feed the hungry in a money, in a manner where the charity does not become a way to gain power over those who are fed. So in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, we are invited to these encounters with Christ, to feed on him, to learn from him, and to learn how to feed others. But I'd like now to flick back to the scenes that come before our story today. Jesus comes to this act of love and compassion from a hard and difficult place, from difficult circumstances. 
earlier in chapter 9, Jesus has just heard that his cousin, John the Baptist, has been beheaded. The execution of this man troubles Jesus. He goes off to find a quiet place and to pray alone. He is sad for the loss of John, for sure. But also, this is a foretelling of his own fate. It is troubling. Jesus too will face the executioner. And in his pain, he will ask for that cup to be taken from him. So Jesus is seeking solitudes, but the crowds are still seeking him. For many of us, these would not be the ideal circumstances for selfless acts of love and compassion. And the pandemic has messed around with all of our lives. It's interfered with our plans, in the small details, perhaps even in the things that we don't tell people about, the loved ones who we are missing, those who have departed, the physical contact we are craving, the cancelled events, the restrictions of our movement, the injustice we feel, lost memories and unfulfilled promises. And I don't know about you, but all of these things have at times left me feeling quite sad, isolated, frustrated and lonely. Perhaps even bitter and certainly uncertain. It feels unknown, like the wilderness. But Jesus invites us to a feast in the wilderness. He invites us to learn how to feed others. In this time of lockdown and self-isolation and physical distancing, I think it's so important to remember that Jesus calls us simultaneously, both individually and collectively. And at the centre of all of this is an invitation of Jesus to each of us, to all of us, an invitation to be in his presence, to be in the presence of our Lord, to know his healing, to know his acceptance and to know his love. And on this, I'd like to finish with this poem from George Herbert. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew me nearer, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be thee. I, the unkind, ungrateful, ah, my dear, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says love, who bore the blame. My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did, sit and eat. So I encourage you to seek out these encounters with Jesus, to linger in the doorway long enough to be beckoned in. And in these, in these times of Christ, we will find compassion and love both at the feast and across the table, both in serving and in being served. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray for your church, both here and around the world. May we grow more and more into your likeness 
and become more and more your good news in our communities. We lift up to you all of the churches in the Woodbridge group as we continue to think about reopening and what this will look like moving into the future. Especially we pray for the PCCs, the church wardens and the council at this time. We pray for Steve and Tash as they prepare to go on sabbatical. Help them, Lord, to know what needs to be done and release them from what does not need to be done. We pray for our world in this global pandemic. We especially lift up to you those countries and communities with insufficient infrastructure in order to offer medical and social care. We pray for provision and cooperation where this is possible. Lord God, we pray for our country, for our, for our leaders, as they make daily decisions about how to best handle this pandemic. Give them wisdom and insight in their work. We lift up to you the sick and those that are anxious. Lord, give them peace. And we pray for those who are mourning. Give them hope. Lord, we thank you and pray for and pray for those who are on the front line in hospitals, shops, schools, council services, and others who put themselves at risk. Lord, we offer all this to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's join together in the words our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we're moving on to our final hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead. guides my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on His pure delights, and I will Trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me home. And though I walk the dark. not fear the evil one, for you are with me and your rod and staff are the comfort. 
me signing off for a while take care of each other stay safe and may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and may the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always Amen Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Bye.